Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. All right. Glad to see you made to the back of the room. How you doing, David? I see you. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Hey, Bob. How are you? Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So nice to have you in my home and in my kitchen here. It's nice to have. Look at this sea of white, uh, y'all. All great chefs from the, I'm happy to say, the Chef John Falls Culinary Institute at Nickel State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana, y'all, right on Bayou Lafourche, that great watery highway from the Gulf of Mexico to the Mississippi River. The cradle of fantastic cooking. And these young uh, culinary students had that uh, program there. And of course, it's my pleasure to be able to, uh, uh, to get into, into that school and teach every now and then. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I want to introduce a very special guest here with us today, Dr. Jacinda Bonvillain, right here. Nice to have you, huh? Thank Let's you. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacinda is a registered dietitian, and she's here to help me do what my greatest challenge is in this show, taking Louisiana's time-honored recipes, y'all, all of the great recipes that's made with all of those, you know, a lot of fat, a lot of sodium, a lot of sugar, and modify them just enough to where we don't don't change the taste, and that's a great challenge, but that's my challenge. And y'all, uh, just a little earlier, we sat down and had a kind of a little interview to give everybody a taste of what we'd be talking about today. So why don't y'all uh, join us and hear what we had to say. I enjoyed that little conversation. Jacinda, it's nice to have you uh, here you. in the kitchen today. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. You're you know, there's a saying in Louisiana, and I use it all the time, you know, who says mama's cooking can't be healthy? But in Louisiana, I tell you, we've had some problems with trying to determine what's healthy and what's not in our cooking, huh? Oh, we really have, and I'm glad that you say that because... Louisiana cooking can be healthy, and I think people need to know that. Um, there are some small modifications that you can make to eat healthier and to help prevent chronic diseases. Right, and, and you know, we're going to be talking about some of those today with, uh, with your help. Uh, a lot of the things that I see on television talks about America being a country of obesity, I mean, is that the direction we're heading in? Yes, yes. Um, people don't exercise a whole lot, and they want to eat fast foods, convenient food, foods. So obesity is a major problem. We're seeing more and more young children who are obese. In fact, type 2 diabetes, which is related to obesity, is more common now in children ages 12 and under. So, so, so the saying, we are what we eat, is exactly right. I mean, Exactly, no. exactly. Uh, now, is moderation, uh, uh, everything in moderation, really the key, or in most cases, do you have to cut things out totally? Well, people always ask me that. You know, they ask me, how do I eat? And I always tell them, I eat what I want, but you have to remember moderation is the key. Too much of anything can be bad. Now, you mentioned exercise. I mean, uh, I know I'm, 
I think healthy a lot, but I mean, exercise is just so difficult. Is there some mm -hmm. easy system on it? I think as far as exercise is concerned, you need to do something that you enjoy doing because if you enjoy it, then you'll be more likely to complete a, a regimen. Um, try to get a partner with you that can help you, a friend that can maybe walk around the block with you, just to get you started. And remember, start off small. Right, and you said and you said fun, but but I guess it's true. I mean, exercise can also be carrying the garbage out to the street right, rather right. than rolling it out there. Or going parking in the last parking place. Yeah, yeah going up one flight store. of stairs. Yeah. I mean, you don't right. have to sign up for the health club. Right. What about fat and sodium? Fat and sodium. Fat and sodium. What's worse? Um, I would think that they were both equally, can be equally dangerous, um, depending on your health condition. Of course, sodium, high levels of sodium are related to high blood pressure, which is uh, directly related to heart disease, as you know. And the intake of saturated fat um, can increase your cholesterol levels, which can lead to heart disease. Well, you know, we have, that's just a little a little taste test right there. We've, uh, I'm tempting everybody's appetite because we're going to talk a lot more about these things in the show today. And I appreciate you coming by early so we could kind of give them an idea of where this thing's going today. Thanks no so much problem. for being You're here. You're welcome. Good, You're welcome. Good. Jacinda, that was great information. Thank you so much for uh, kicking the ball, so to speak, today. Before we start the show, I, I have to, before we start cooking, do you realize that your grandmother was one of the first guests on My Taste of Louisiana television uh, show for PBS many years ago? I know that. Huh? Yeah. Alligator Annie. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know Alligator Annie? Anybody in here? Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, she ought to be a Louisiana legend. I know she is a Louisiana legend, but she should be put in the Louisiana Hall of Fame. She started the swamp tour craze of Louisiana that is now a multi-million dollar industry in the state, right? She was the first one, the very first one. How did she get started? Actually, the Chamber of Commerce came to her and asked her if she would be willing to do something like this because she was a big trapper well, she was and a hunter in her day. One of the woman tra women trappers right, of Louisiana, right, yeah. Right. She was a pilot, I remember. Mm -hmm. huh? She was. Uh, to, you, you've got some good blood flowing through your veins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's so nice to have you uh, here with us today. The topic of the show, y'all. Uh, time for an oil change. It's time for an oil change. Yeah. That's right, because fat, y'all, fat in, in its entirety, I want to, you and I, you're going to try to teach me what is all of this mess between polyunsaturated, saturated, what is, why is olive oil supposed to be better than something else? I'm, you know, I, I'm a slow learner. I need, I need some help. Y'all, let me introduce y'all to Rex, my buddy Rex. He's my main cameraman, and Rex will be stirring my pots with me today. He's going to be getting a close-up. Let's give my hand, huh? <laughs> so we're going to get started right now. And Rex, let's take a look right back here at the Osabuco. Y'all, the first dish I'm doing is a fantastic veal Osabuco. Osabuco from the Greek long bone. Uh, oso meaning bone, buco. Buco, big, you know, long bone. And here it is right here. Here's the veal shank uh, right here. The shank, this is a lamb shank. This right here, the pork shank. This is the, the, the hind pork shank. Look at the meat on that bone right there, skin on. And this is venison shanks right here. And y'all, just to show you where it comes from, here's the leg, the back leg of the animal. And of course, coming down to the knee and the bottom hoof, that's the shanks. You see, we've uh, taken them off. And these are really a great braising meat, but that bone is so full of marrow, and you take all of this excess fat off of it, and you can have a pretty good piece of meat. So let me show you what we've done uh, over here. Now, is the, the, the marrow in that bone right there is the problem, right? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Solid fat, right? Right, right. So what, uh, let, let, me, let me ask you something. Let me tell you what I'm doing here. I've taken these veal shanks, and normally I slow cook them like this in bacon fat. But today I, d I took turkey bacon, which is a much leaner bacon. It doesn't have quite as much sodium in it. And I rendered this bacon to give the smoky flavor that we really love in, in Osabuco when we do the slow saute. And I browned my shanks long and slow, y'all, about a medium heat here until, in fact, it took about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes to brown these shanks right here. Of course, realizing that the marrow is gonna be right in the center of that bone, uh, uh, and it's going to come out. I'm going to have to skim uh, this Osabuco dish. And in fact, to really modify it properly, I do it overnight 
and then take all the saturated fat off the next morning after it rises to the surface. That's a good tip, right? Very good. See how smart I am? You are. Huh? You are. See y'all? Huh? 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 <laughs> By the way, y'all, I didn't even introduce two great people sitting right here. Uh, the dean of the Chef John Falls Culinary Institute in White right here, Dr. Bob Harrington. Welcome, Bob. Nice Thank to you. have you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Huh? Right, right, right next to him, y'all, Dr. Don Lyle, president of Nichols State University in Thibodeau, the home of the Institute. All right, all right, all right, all right. let's get a shot of George Caslow, too, because he's uh, one of our instructors over there. <laughs> And, and look, right there in the front seat, that's Carol Gunter, y'all, right there. Get a shot of Carol Gunter right there. <laughs> All right. Okay, it's my turn again, Rex. It's my turn. Come here. Okay, you see right here, I have all those sabuco gone. Oh, does that smell great? Oh, does that smell? Now, now, y'all, all of the great seasonings of Louisiana. Now, one thing I've learned, Jacinda, is that when you're modifying, you take out some of the things that's bad for you, but you pile on the things that are good for you, the rough stuff. Like this, onion, celery, bell pepper. Look at those gorgeous bell peppers right there. Uh, and pretty colored bell peppers. That looks like, like Mardi Gras in the pot, right? And these are really good for you, huh? Mm, very good. Not only very good, good seasonings, but good for you. Look at here, y'all, garlic. Oh, my God. Oh, good garlic, good garlic. Huh? There you go. That's what I like to hear from Louisiana cooks, y'all. Good, good garlic. Now I'm going to spread that around my veal shanks right here. A couple of other quick things, carrots. We always want to add, now carrots are great for you, huh? Very good. Car Very good. Carrots are good for you, even if you eat them raw, just so, but, but I mean, in Osabuco, they add a nice sweetness to the dish, a nice mirepoix addition. Now, tomatoes, I'm gonna add low sodium, low sodium tomatoes, diced tomatoes in, in, in their own liquid. I'm gonna add those down because you have to, have, look how beautiful that is right there. This, this looks good enough to eat. <laughs> and I'm removed, you know how much fat, no bacon fat in this dish, two tablespoons of olive oil started the process, and because of that 60%, y'all, 60% of the fat was removed out of 60%. Can you imagine that? And it's just a good braised item. Now, I'm gonna come in with a little red wine. Oh, yeah, good yeah. red wine. Yeah. Tell me about that French paradox. Huh? The red wine's supposed to be pretty good for you. Right, the French have a very low incidence of heart disease. Yeah, is it the antioxidant uh, factor? Right, or? because of the antioxidants in wine. They eat a lot of fats, but they drink a lot of wine and they eat the, the good kind of fat. Uh, I tell you what, I didn't know that. I, you know, when you talk about flavor, there's no bad fats, huh? <laughs> but, but when you talk about health, there's a few bad fats. Okay, y'all, I just went in with low sodium beef stock, and I made the beef stock defatted. Again, you can make a good beef stock and put it again in the refrigerator. If you're going to make like a demi glace or you're going to make a veal stock, just go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. No salt is added to it. And then you take that layer of fat off of the top, you got a clean stock, almost like a consomme is all you, you're going to have there. Really nice. Now, y'all, I'm going to finish this with a little basil and thyme, naturally, right down into the dish. Uh, a salt substitute. Salt substitute, pretty good uh, little salt substitute here. Cracked pepper, y'all, how much do you want? Remember, I seasoned them good already. Woo! <laughs> Now, now, by the way, y'all, the sodium reduction, 80%. 80%. Uh, I think we're supposed to consume no more than about two to 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day. Normally in Louisiana, six to 8,000 milligrams in our diet, and I took 80% out of this dish. Y'all, when this is all cooked, I would put a, bring it to a boil. Whenever you put stock in a pot to go into the oven to braise, Bring this stock to a rolling boil. That way when you put it in your 375 degree oven, it's instantaneous cooking. If you put a cold stock in your oven, you lose an hour worth of time in the oven and your time's a shot. So go ahead and put a lid on this once it's boiling and Rex, oh, you ought to take a look at this braised veal shank right here. I'm gonna put some of that sauce right on top of it. Y'all, what do you think that looks like right there? Oh. <laughs> And Rex, look, a, a, a dozen roses for you, Rex. I'll kiss the lens right there. A dozen roses for you. Basilico, y'all, great basil. Now, I'll tell you what, Bob, I'm going to give you one of these. And you're going to, you can share that with Dr. Ayo right here. Well, I don't know about huh? that. Oh, yeah, you're going to. Oh, 
y'all, look at that, look at that, look at that. I tell you, huh? Come to my home, I treat y'all like kings, huh? huh? You know how it's done. Give me that black plate right there, Dr. Uh, I. You know, I'm going to put this right on top of it, and then y'all go ahead and fight for it right there. Help, right, put, no, there you go, right there. there. Y'all fight Bob, for it. Bob. Okay, Bob, hey, Bob, you can share one. Pass a couple of them in the back of the audience right there as well. Okay, y'all, so that's the first dish. Everybody happy with that one? That was a yeah. pretty tasty dish. Hmm? <laughs> All right. Y'all, while they're doing that, I want to show you another fantastic reason we need to think about reducing fat in a Louisianian's diet. Take a look right here at my pork chops. I'm going to do a Creole pork chop and rice casserole, y'all, using lean chops, a little olive oil, and a little fat uh, beef stock. And when we talk about time for an oil change, in Louisiana, we used to get our pork chops with the rind on, and oh, you talk about great tasting. Oh, this tastes good right here. But can you imagine the amount of fat in those chops? So now I cut all of this off, and I use just this nice meat from the center of the loin and all of these gorgeous tomatoes to make, it, uh, to make this a, a dish that is 78%, y'all, less fat. 78% less fat. Now I'm going to crank this up again here. Oh, I tell you. Now, we're doing pretty good so far, aren't you, Very Sandy? Good. Huh? Very good. Very good. And that food's going to taste pretty good. I'm going to give you one. Uh, did y'all pass one of those, uh, those osabucos down here to Jacinda or what? No. Oh, no, y'all blocking her out, huh? Uh, there you go. The chefs are blocking out the dietitian again, huh? <laughs> okay, y'all, let me show you what I got here, Rex. Look at this. I've browned my chops beautifully in just two tablespoons of oil. I put a little uh, low, uh, low, low sodium on here, a little salt substitute. And, of course, at the same time, I put a lot of good cracked pepper, two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, y'all, this is what a dish that Louisianians really love. We love dishes like this. They're casseroles in a cast iron pot. Rice dishes, tomato dishes, a lot of great seasonings. Hey, I hear y'all moaning over there. How do y'all like that stuff? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Let me, oh, look at them. They're fighting one. over it, y'all. They're <laughs> fighting over it over there. Huh? Mm. Oh, okay. pretty good. I, I still hadn't seen one coming down here to my buddy Jacinda. Huh? <laughs> okay, y'all, look, right here, now that I have this uh, uh, pot with just uh, two tablespoons of olive oil, tell me about olive oil. Olive oil is still fat. Olives are still fat, but yet reduced olive, reducing the amount of olive oil put in a dish rather than one of our vegetable oils, is it better? Or Just tell me a little bit about it that. It is better because it's a good source of monounsaturated saturated fat. Olive oil and canola oil are good sources of monounsaturated fat, and this is the type of fat that has been linked to a decreased risk of heart disease. Ah. And of course, olive oil adds a good flavor. Oh, yeah. When well, you know, I always tell, I tell uh, when I teach at the Institute, I always tell my students that when you add olive oil to a dish, you've committed to Mediterranean, Italian, or Southern French cooking because olive oil is an ingredient. Olive oil is not a catalyst like a vegetable oil that moves onions and celery through a pot. You've committed to, hey, I'm Italian, I'm French, I'm Spanish when you add olive oil to the dish. Y'all, I'm put in here a nice lean tasso. This is the Louisiana ham, tasso, from the Spanish word tasajo, meaning dried or cured meat. This is the most seasoned of the Louisiana hams, and I got the lean version right here. So once that goes in, then I'm going to throw in, again, all of the great flavors. But look how I cut my onions here, Rex. See that? I cut my onions on this half-inch to three-quarter-inch dice here because, uh, again, we're building up the things that are good for us and making them very chewable in our finished dish. Onion, celery, bell pepper. Again, I'm doing a wonderful Creole... A rice casserole here, and I mentioned that because of the lean chops, the olive oil, and the low fat beef stock I'm going to put in it, 78% less fat, 90% less sodium. Can you imagine that? Look at my garlic here, y'all. I'm putting slivered garlic in this bad boy. Huh? Slivered garlic in this bad boy here. Now, y'all, these gorgeous peppers. You notice I'm using a lot of, of these colored peppers. I think it's important, really important, when we're adding this, uh, the rough stuff, as I call it, the good vegetables to our cooking. When we're modifying dishes, we want it to be very eye-appealing. Very, very eye-appealing. I never tell people, hey, come to my house, y'all. I'm cooking low-fat cooking. You know? No, you want food to look good. You want it to be presented well, and it's going to be very, very nice to the, to the diner. And, you know, I'm talking to young chefs here. Young chefs, let me tell you, 
We don't, if we have a responsibility not only to cook things that we like and pile it on, we have a responsibility and a commitment to our diner to see how we can make food good for them as well. So remember that. All right, Rex, now that that's all in there, I'm going to throw in my gorgeous, remember I said a Creole tomato and rice casserole? Fresh Creole tomatoes. Low sodium tomato sauce right in there. This is tomato day, y'all. Green onions right there. Basil and thyme, again, right in there. Pile on the herbs, too, y'all. That's where, if you want to replace fat flavor, pile on the fresh herbs. They're good for you. Now into that, I'm going to add a little beef stock, three cups, because I'm adding Louisiana rice to this dish. And for every one and a half, one cup of rice, I add a cup and a half of stock or water. So there's that nice rice going down in there. And Rex, I'm going to stir this around nicely here. And as I blend it, I'm going to bring it to a good boil, put a lid on it, turn that fire down to low, put a lid back on it, and let me show you what this is going to look like when it's all said and done. I tell you, look at it and weep. Look at it and weep. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Tell. That's what I'm talking about. Huh? Look at that right there, y'all. Look at that pork chop, huh? Look at that pork chop right there. Rex, you get out of the way. I'm feeding Jacinda. Uh, oh, yeah, they, hey, look, they didn't take good, good care of Jacinda, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm taking care of her now myself. Oh, I tell you, y'all, this is going to be really good. Now, look, this is a lean pork chop, well seasoned. Oh. <laughs> there you go, baby. <laughs> now, Oh, I, I, wish I, I wish I had a little glass of Pinot Noir for you right now. <laughs> uh, a little bit more of this. Now, y'all, as I said, this is a dish. This is what Louisianians love the most. Rice dishes like this that are full flavored, and we can have them. And what about brown rice? Brown rice is fantastic, y'all. Put it, put it in dishes like this. And George, I'm going to give this one to you. No flour. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Jacinda, very quickly, I know you're about to eat there, but I have butter here, I have just a regular vegetable oil, and I have olive oil here, and I have a saturated fat right here. This is just one of the shortenings. Now, just very quickly in a sentence or two, if I had to choose one to cook with that's going to be the healthiest for me, which and why? It's always going to be the olive oil or the canola because of the, they're higher in monounsaturated fat. It's the best oils to cook with. So go for olive oil first, right. and since that's an ingredient, what should I go to second? Basically just a good vegetable? A good canola, canola oil. Canola oil would be second, and I'll, right. be sa I'll be safe. Right. And just cut it back as much as I can. You know, right. in most cases, my one cup of oils have been cut to two and three tablespoons, and I found no difference. Mm -hmm. They're good. Y'all, let me show you a couple of other great dishes here for you, y'all. Oh, I tell you. You talk about good. Shoe peg corn salad, y'all. Shoe peg corn salad. Shoe peg is a white corn. And it's not only is it a nice white corn, it's a very, very sweet corn. It's a full sugar corn. And what I've done with the shoe peg corn salad, I've used a light mayonnaise, Jacinda. I tell you, you ought to really love me today as a dietitian. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not, but I found out it works. It really works, you know. Uh, light mayonnaise, y'all, no oil at all in this recipe, so I have 80% less fat. 80% less fat. If I put oil and mayonnaise in here, this same dish would look identical. I'd have all the fresh vegetables, the tomato, the corn, the celery, the red cabbage, the basil, all of my herbs, and I would have 80% more fat. And I tell you what, as an addition to the osabuco, right on the side of the pasta, oh, I tell you, uh, somebody get the gun, huh? <laughs> right next to that, y'all, look at my gorgeous lemon blueberry nut cake. Now, you say you can't bake without fats. Well, let me tell you what, light margarine, light margarine, y'all, egg substitute. Do you know that egg substitute is 99% egg white? 99% egg white and just a little bit yellow food coloring, but it has the same thickening ability and same coagulation, basically, ability as you have with egg yolk, just without the fat. So with, and then I put a little grape nuts in here in the place of pecans, 40% less fat, y'all, sodium, 30% less right there. So you can see that all of the dishes that I've done today are really great Louisiana specialties, the veal shank, the Creole rice, Oh, the, almost like a jambalaya. And of course, a great dessert and a great salad, y'all. I want to ask you one question. Who says mama's cooking can't be healthy? That's what I want to know, huh? Mm -hmm. huh?
No, nobody. Y'all, thank you so much. Huh? Hey, love it. And you. And you Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fulce's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.